Hey everybody, my name is Scott Steen. I'm the lead handicapper over at winnersandwiners.com. Winnersandwiners.com, if you're not familiar, is the number one site in the world for predictive sports analysis on each and every contest going on every single day in America. That's right, every game, every day, always free. Winnersandwiners.com. And of course, I do have my own premium picks available if you'd like to get signed up for the premium service. We'd love to have you on the team. I will put the link up in the description of this video. Feel free to click on that and follow us to victory. All right, so without further ado, we're going to take a look at uh, the second game of this weekend's uh, divisional set as the Tennessee Titans travel to Baltimore to take on the Ravens as of this writing, as of this recording, rather. Uh, the Ravens are a 10-point home favorite, and the total in this game is 46 and a half. And the tail of the tape? Well, it goes a little something like this. The Titans this season are 10 and 7 straight up, 9, 7, and 1 against the number, 10 and 7 to the over, as far as overs unders goes. And the Ravens, they are your number one seed, the first place team in the AFC North Division. They are 14 and 2 straight up on the season, 10, 5, and 1 against the spread. And the under, uh, excuse me, the over is cashed nine times in their 16 games. Well, guys, the Ravens, they are an anomaly this season. They led the league in rushing. But they also led the league in points. And normally you think of running teams as those three yards and a cloud of dust grinding out, beat you into submission type teams. But, ladies and gentlemen, this ain't your dad's 72 Dolphins, all right? Because the Ravens, well, they have their very own anomaly at the quarterback position. Meet Lamar Jackson. The single most exciting player to hit the league in probably the last 15 years, at least. And this comes from a guy wearing a Pat Mahomes jersey. You know, would I rather have Jackson than PM15? Well, I think Mahomes has a little better arm, although it's closer than most people think. And if I had my choice of 10 healthy years of each, I'd probably take Jackson. But here's the problem. He's not likely to get 10 healthy years. At least that's what the track record of running quarterbacks in the NFL says. Dante Culpepper, Donovan McNabb, Randall Cunningham, Michael Vick, none were able to dodge injuries, or in the case of Vick, uh, other problems. So let's just enjoy it while we can, shall we? Uh, Lamar Jackson, he finished sixth in the league this year in rushing, and he also finished 672 yards ahead of the quarterback who had the second most rushing yards, and that is Kyler Murray, the rookie from the Arizona Cardinals. He averaged 6.9 yards per carry. That is first in the league and it is 23% more than the runner-up average. But, as Billy Mays would have said, but wait, there's more! Because not only do you have arguably the best running back, uh, best running quarterback in NFL history, but you also have the NFL leader in TD passes as well with 36. What's amazing, the Ravens didn't throw the ball very much by today's standard. Uh, they were, were 27th in passing yardage, and they were dead last in passing attempts. Now, that's worth saying... One more time, they were last in attempts and first in touchdown passes. Has that ever happened before? I have no idea. I'm not the Elias Sports Bureau. Bureau. Um, I did some uh, banging around on the interweb. Wasn't able to find out if that had ever been done before. But it's, uh, either way, it is damn impressive. So here's the deal, Tennessee. Go ahead, stack the box. Dare Jackson to beat you with his arm because he will. Um, unfortunately... The news on the other side of the ball isn't quite as good for the Ravens. You know, just as Lamar Jackson isn't going to uh, remind any Ravens fans of Trent Dilfer, uh, this, gener uh, this uh, defense isn't going to generate many comps to the 2000 uh, Ray Lewis defense of the Super Bowl champion Baltimore Ravens. But the good news is um, they're getting better, uh, at, least against, at least against average competition. In the second half of the season, they allowed just 106 points. Uh, that is 13.2 points per game, and that is a... Uh, a number that would have been first in the NFL over the entire season. However, there is a little bit of an asterisk with those numbers. Uh, they did a very good job against the Rams and the Texans, but they didn't face a running back that's nearly as good as the Tennessee Titans, Derrick Henry. Uh, the Ravens ranked just 20th in the league in uh, yards per attempt allowed at 4.4, and teams have been able to find some success running the football between the tackles with uh, big uh, running backs who have a little bit of breakaway speed. But here's the deal. Any team that's one-dimensional can absolutely be stopped in the NFL. And that's why it's imperative that Ryan Tannehill play like the 2019 version of Ryan Tannehill and not the version that we saw prior to that. Think of him as Cinderella. This year he was at the ball having a great time. Uh, prior to this season, he'd pretty much uh, been full of uh, pumpkins and drudgery. So we need to get Ryan back to uh, dancing at the ball 
wearing those glass slippers. Um, he was the most efficient quarterback in the NFL after being installed as a starter in Week Eight. Uh, now, like we talked about, he didn't do last. He didn't do much last week against New England, but part of that because they didn't have to. The Titans they decided to run at the Patriots until they could stop them, and the Patriots, well, they never did. Uh, this game for me is probably going to come down to the, whether the Titans offensive line uh, has the ability to keep Ryan Tannehill clean against the Baltimore Blitz. Um, no team blitzes more than Baltimore, and Tannehill versus the Blitz, not a particularly good look. Uh, when facing the Blitz, he took a sack uh, at the fourth highest rate in the NFL. Now, uh, he does, tends to hold the ball too long trying to make that decision, and he will take the sacks. Now, the good news for Tennessee fans is, um, if he stayed upright in the face of the Blitz, he did okay, actually above average. Uh, when facing the Blitz this season, he threw seven touchdown passes, just two picks, and had a quarterback rating of 105.2. All those numbers are above league average versus the Blitz. Guys, at the end of the day, though, I think both of these offenses are going to eat. They're simply too good at what they do to get shut down by those opposing defenses. This game should be very entertaining, and uh, it's always fun. We get to see the best quarterback in the NFL and the best running back in the NFL go head-to-head. And I think the score is probably going to reflect that, especially early. Uh, my prediction is both of these teams are going to want to make a splash early and then control the clock late. Therefore, I got a favorite play on this one, and it is the first half over 23 and a half. Like I said, uh, Baltimore could get out to a lead and absolutely just grind Tennessee to dust there in the second half. Um, and if it's if it's close, I think both these teams are still going to look to run the ball. But I think that first half, I think it's going to have some dynamic plays. I think it's going to have some splash plays, and I do like the over 23 and a half. So let's get ourselves down on the Tennessee Titans, Baltimore Ravens first half over 23 and a half at the end of that contest. You guys can join me. We'll pick up our winning tickets, and we will head back to the window. All right, everybody, good luck on all of your plays this week. Thanks very much for watching, please. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give us the like. Don't forget to give us the subscribe. We appreciate the effort, and we'll see you next time. Take care.